welcome back to PMR. Today we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max Apple's leather case. This has max of capabilities and we got it for $59. We put a link down below. Here's your barcode or serial number. So let's open it. Inside the case, you have the manual. Then we have the leather case. Feels good on the hands. You got the premium feel. Nice color as well. Let's go on the side. You have these nice bronze buttons here. Would have been nice if the camera lip or rim matches it. Goes on the top. Pretty simple and clean. Side you got the volume and the mute switch. A little bit on the small side. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to use your index finger. Won't be able to fit your thumb, I don't think. Going down at the bottom here. You got the matching cutout for the speaker holes. And there's your lightning connector. We're always testing this part. Nice and solid. Because usually when you start plugging in your lightning connector in and out. This will wear out in time, so that's good. Good strong feel, doesn't really bend. And of course, you'll flex this way, which is what you want. You'll be able to easily put your phone in. Of course, in the inside, you got this nice felt lining, so it won't really scratch your phone. This has your iPhone design in California, made in China. I really like the suede feel. Now, does it go around the case? No, it doesn't. So it's just in the back. Here's the view on the top. Let's go on the side. So this is just a simple cover. It doesn't have any like shock absorption on your each corner or those honeycomb structures on the side. It's just a plain cover. It comes in five colors. You got umber, forest green, ink, midnight, and orange. Grab our iPhone 14 Pro Max. You have the case. We'll always start on the camera side first on the top. Push it from the bottom and just go around. Very simple to put on, minimalistic case, very simple. Now I do have a speak and screen protector, but even without it, you see the exposed stainless steel and the actual screen. The lip is still raised enough so it can protect it. And there is a tiny gap between the speak and screen protector and the case, which is what you want, because once this starts touching the case, it might start bubbling up. There's no cutout on the top, which is okay because you can see, you can still see the stainless steel. So the speaker sound will go through just fine. The buttons, they're okay. I mean, they're not the clickiest, but it's not the worst either. So I'd say, I'd say about average. The holds a little bit on the small side. I mean, you can still use your thumb, but it would have been better if it's bigger. The mute switch. The hole on the mute switch is a little bit on the small side. I mean, let's try our thumb here. Yeah, you could still get it in there, but it's a little bit too small. On and off is the same, average buttons. Looking at the front, it looks nice. It makes your camera pop out because of that color. You got the dark purple and umber. It does feel good on the hand. Of course, it's gonna be on the slippery side, but just smooth as butter. Let's see if it's high enough to protect those camera lens. Yes, definitely high enough. Here's another view, just a little bit higher. Should protect if you have your camera facing down. This is a nice simplistic phone case. I'm sure in time you'll get your wear and tear, just like especially the corners here, if you drop it a couple of times. Here's a view at the bottom, you have that nice matching cutouts with the phone, one is longer than the other. Plenty of space for third party lightning connectors, no issues. It is slippery with that leather texture, so just be aware. The fitment, ah, nice and snug, okay. As you can see, it doesn't really move here, let's try it on the button side. Of course, you got a little bit of give. The bottom here, not really moving. Of course, your corners are very snug and fit. Nice, good fitment. On the top. Now, is it hard or easy to take off? Let's see. Pop out this corner. That came out. Came out. So the type of person that changes cases from time to time, it's a little bit tricky taking it off. And of course, we gotta check out the MagSafe capability. Let's try on some accessories. You have your Apple leather wallet, right here. Nice. The color does match with your leather case and your Apple's wallet. We have the Pitaka mag sleeve. Well, like a different color, darker color. Then if you want more of a functional wallet, like a stand and a grip, you have the pop socket. Also has an alignment at the bottom. A strap style grip by Sinji Muro. A 
a wallet stand by ESR. You got your different color ring grips, silver color, matte finish grip. And your MagSafe charger. Checking the strength on the magnets. Now it all depends on your accessories as well. This is a decent one by Spigen. Now Apple's is already good. I'd say this is your base normal magnet strength. But let's try it anyway. With normal handling, you'll be fine. Let's go ahead and exaggerate it already. Let's go up and down. That's a good hold. Up. Shake. Just random. Up. Left. Right. Magnet's already good, but I just want to take this off. Much force. There. Just an FYI, guys, you start using MagSafe accessory, it will leave a ring. Just comparing with the other cases we have. Now, the Rhino Shield is the strongest one. You got Pitaka a little bit on the low end. We have Rhino Shield that still has the strongest hold. You got your Apple Silicon, which is base nominal, which is already good. And Pitaka is a little bit on the low end. Light or heavy, it all depends on the person. We'll put that on the scale later. Now we don't have a leather case to compare it to just yet. Let's just see it with other cases. 22 grams, 34 grams, 64 grams. Leather case weighs at about 28 grams. So Apple leather case falls around here. That's your iPhone 14 Pro Max leather case. Now we got for $59. We'll put a link down below. It comes in five colors. Let us know if you have any questions. Subscribe and stay positive.